So our next speaker is Tony Fitzpatrick. Uh, he's the head of BIM at AW2 Architects, a company from Finland, and he has more than 25 years of professional design experience, as well as various BIM tools. Tony, our virtual stage is yours. Please tell us about a hospital project that was a big BIM fuck up from the first day, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome along to my presentation, and thank you for taking the time to attend. Also, thank you to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present on this topic. Uh, my presentation I've called BIM Behaving Badly, um, and I'll share with you one of our projects, which um, is really a complete BIM fuck up right from the start. The, uh, about myself, I am Tony Fitzpatrick. I'm originally from New Zealand. Um, while I was in New Zealand, I spent 20 odd years as an architectural designer working mainly for myself, uh, working on a wide range of projects throughout New Zealand and up into Japan and the odd Pacific Island as well. Uh, mainly residential type work, but also um, a reasonable amount of commercial, small commercial type projects, cafes, restaurants, the odd rest home, and even a small sports stadium. And I came up to Finland in 2015 to take up a position up here in Helsinki um, as part of a team preparing a hospital project for a competition, which we eventually won, and I ended up staying here since then. I have been using Archicad since around 1999, so I'm a bit of an Archicad guru, and I'm the key Archicad guy in, in our company. I'm also a Graphisoft certified Archicad BIM manager, and my position at the moment is as head of BIM here at AW2 Architect in Finland, and we also have a office in um, Tallinn, Estonia. And we have approximately 70 odd staff across both offices and we also work um, in a bigger consortium called Integrated Healthcare where we combine the resources of a number of offices throughout um, Finland and Greater Europe um, and specialise in hospital design. And I am also the CEO and founder of a company called The BIM Crowd. Uh, it's a company I've formed with a couple of colleagues in South Africa and Japan, and we provide architectural and BIM outsourcing services to, uh, at the moment, primarily designers, architects, and the like in New Zealand, um, and looking to expand further afield in the future. So the project I'm going to share with you today is a hospital which we've been working on for a while. It's located in central Finland. It's approximately 20,000 square meters in size um, and with a budget of 60,000, ah, sorry, 60 million euros. And we started it back in May 2018, although this was our third crack at this project as the um, Project parameters changed over time um, as health board um, requirements in Finland changed during the process. So it started off as a much bigger project uh, and eventually ended up as what it is. So our company, we're a Archicad company. We do all of our work uh, right from the start, generally on Archicad, uh, right through to finished documentation. We also use Solubri for our model checking and clash detection type work. Uh, we host all, all our projects since 2015 on BIMCloud where we can share with our um, other consultants as I said through throughout, Helsinki, uh, throughout Finland and in Europe when we have foreign companies on board. Uh, we tend to use render lights for our rendering work. And in this project, we introduced BIM Colab as a means of issue management um, 
part way through. So the process for this project, basically we had a, a project team was formed back in May of 2018. There wasn't a lot of uh, thought put into the resourcing of that team. It was just uh, some who was available at that time to, to jump on the project. Jobs were assigned based on the old school method of what drawings were required. So um, there was someone doing you know, ceiling drawings and someone doing floor plans and someone doing elevations and, and such like. <clears throat> so there wasn't sort of really a truly integrated BIM approach right from the start. Uh, the team started off with about five or six people. Uh, at times it grew to uh, like 11 or 12, but at no point was anyone ever in charge of the team. Uh, it was our company really liked their flat hierarchy structure um, where everyone is equal and no one has any authority over anyone else. And as, as uh, the workload increased during the project, uh, team, members, team members were added randomly without real consultation with those who knew what they were doing about what was actually required and how it could be achieved. So our lead architect would just um, get the message that certain drawings were required uh, within the next month or two months. And next thing we know, there would be someone else in the team um, working on these drawings um, as such and not a lot of coordination as to how they worked with everyone else so it was everyone a, a group of individuals basically working on this project um, then also inexperienced Archicad users were often given major tasks throughout the project at one point we needed to transition from one version of ARCHICAD to a later version. Um, so rather than using the most experienced ARCHICAD users uh, to, to do that, we used the skills of someone who thought they knew ARCHICAD but had only used it sort of as a for a small period of time. So they handled the transition process and also a process of breaking the file down into some smaller components to make it more workable and unfortunately not knowing what they were doing they um, made it uh, increasingly less workable and more difficult to use throughout the process. As I mentioned before there was little coordination between the team uh, often people could be doing things um, and undoing stuff that someone else was doing because they were both working effectively in the same areas but because they'd been given different um, messages and different methods of how to do some some things they didn't realize that the other person at times was working on the same thing as them so it caused a lot of um, distress and a lot of extra work trying to fix things up and make sure that everything came out right and from the start of the process, we didn't really have any systems for managing information. Um, this was probably one of the second really big project for our office um, of this, this type of work where we were working in such a big team with such a big project. Um, so we were still working in the um, manner that we were when we were a team or an office of 12 people as it was when I started back in 2015. By this point, we were up to about team of 50 overall, um, but our working process has never changed. So what went along, what went wrong along the way um, is we had is, uh, inexperienced users in using ARCHICAD and we had a mix of old school type designers who were sort of enshrined in the AutoCAD way. Um, what we ended up with was some people would be away drawing details and they wouldn't be uh, coordinating with the model at all. They would just be having a look at, at the area that they were detailing 
and then getting the information from manufacturers and suppliers and drawing the detail um, in a optimal configuration um, which was all fine and well when everything was perfect but when the constraint the design constraints came in and you worked out where say the slope of the, the roof below actually finished in relation to the window or the door um, door sill uh, things weren't matching up and they weren't if we'd carried on with those details as they were we would have had problems on site so there was a lot of having to go back and double check on, on work that experienced people had done um, and just making sure that all their details were accurate according to the model and they were also detailing in 2D and not not coordinating with the model by or not bringing the information into the model so that later on when we went to detail up something similar in a different area um, we would then be starting from scratch trying to work out quite often how things work because the detailing hadn't been carried through into the model um, because of some a lot of poor modeling practices um, too much bad bad objects um, detailing up infamo or detailing up some 3d stuff that was an excessively uh, high level um, and linking files and hot linking files in a, in a manner which was uh, causing lots of confusion um, it, it, it caused our file size to massively blow out which then has caused lots of performance issues throughout the project um, a lot of this too is probably related to not having adequate software amongst the uh, hardware amongst the whole team uh, some of us have less problems than others doing exactly the same thing uh, the bad file structures also caused information to go missing so people were creating um, like, you know, things like properties and stuff without thinking about uh, the whole project and how everything worked together so things were not transferring through cleanly um, and there was hundreds of hours wasted uh, doing work in 2D manner uh, which was easily performed directly from the model if the model had been built properly in the first place and as I mentioned that some team were working on um, inadequate hardware so it means they couldn't run the largest files so then they were often doing workarounds just to produce some results and that means that the work that they were doing wasn't actually connected fully to the project file so we've sort of got this uh, case where now some of the drawings are being produced from one, one file um, but they're being uh, recorded in another file um, and they're not there's no longer a single point of reference for all of our drawing uh, output so what did all this result in um, firstly we've gone well over budget now that's over budget both on site and in our design budget um, we had initially exceeded the design budget so we tried to bring that back and what that has done has meant lots of compromise along the way um, there have been additional costs on site as a result of not addressing issues that could have been seen in the design stage had we been using our model correctly and, and addressing that information at the time um, there's been a lot of errors with as I said the details not matching the model um, been drawn just off the manufacturer's spec sheets elements have gone missing um, so and sometimes uh, with some of our staff not knowing what they're doing we've lost whole floors uh, we've lost you know groups of walls rooms all sorts of stuff just by uh, inexperience and there have been issues on site and uh, not due to us not using the, the model uh, to address these accurately during the design phase we've got angry stakeholders our clients are angry due, due to a whole lot of unaddressed issues so it's at the point now that they no longer uh, accept any architectural type solutions to problems it's all just whatever will get the job done at the cheapest rate is or the cheapest cost is what they accept now 
Our consultants have been annoyed um, throughout the project due to the poor quality of the information which is then produced by us, which has then been causing them issues. And as I said, the design was compromised right from an early stage because we were unable to use our model to come up with viable solutions um, to what we wanted to achieve. So lots of design elements have been removed. So it's during this process which I came up with the um, Fitzpatrick BIM curve and it basically describes the potential for major BIM issues to arrive as being the sum of the inverse of user school level. So I found during this one that the lower the school level of a user, the astronomically higher um, potential for problems throughout the project. So even on a project team where everyone's working on the same file, it seems that the ones with the least knowledge of the software have the largest number of problems by a, by a huge factor. So, what have we done to stop this all happening again? First of all, we have spent some time um, discussing the issues and come up with basically a plan. Uh, first part of this is to structure teams. So we need to put um, all projects now will have a defined project team with users being assigned specific roles um, depending on their strengths be a clearly defined team leader and the BIM manager will be responsible for delivering the, uh, the 3D model. So all, all um, questions in relation to modeling and how that's done will go through the BIM manager and what he says goes and there will be a office standard for that. Um, before every project now we will be kicking off with a project execution plan so we'll be sitting down um, to map out the objectives of the project work out how the files will be structured structured establish what deliverables are going to be required um, and identify all of the resources that we're going to need along the way so with regards to staffing um, software requirements things like that and we we'll also set out our team structure and give everyone roles so that everyone knows what their position in the team is and who is in charge most of all. And managing information. So we've put a lot of effort into working out how we can better manage our information. So since then we've introduced teams. Oops, sorry about that. We've introduced teams. Um, so we're using that for our internal communication. We're starting to use tasks by planner so we can start putting um, daily, weekly tasks in there so everyone knows what they're doing as they go. And we've also put a system in place for pub managing of the publishing of the drawings because in the past it was a case of various emails and word of mouth that, you know, so I want this one published today and I want this one published. Can you do this? Can you do that? And Or we had people just publishing stuff randomly as they felt which caused all sorts of headaches. And we've introduced BIM Colab um, as an issue management platform, so both internally and externally. So this was introduced during this project and we are now extending this throughout our whole office. This I found has to be um, a godsend for managing issues and, and problems. And in, in the longer term, we are going to look to introduce Dorophis for data management so that we can manage room cards, um, client expectations and client requirements along the way. So then we can integrate this into our model process and have everything coming from sort of some single sources or, or as minimal a number of sources as possible. So what other measures have we put in place? Um, Things like regular file auditing, so now the BIM manager's role will be to uh, regularly audit the file, um, make sure that everything's tidy and clean and that people are doing things in a proper manner. Looking to use digital markups so that we can coordinate this with teams um, and eventually directly into Archicad as the technology becomes available so that everyone can be on top of the markups currently we've been working with a pen on paper and so we've got huge pieces of paper with 
uh, markups which tend to get lost and not fully um, dealt with. Um, we are currently producing an enhanced BIM template for our ARCHICAD system, so we are making sure that that's got all of the settings that we need or the majority of the things that we need for most projects already set up, ready to go, so that once someone jumps into a project, uh, a lot of the documentation is being taken care of in the background uh, so that we can then focus more on uh, design and less on documentation. And along with that is the development of a BIM protocol to the office um, and a BIM manual. So we're going to have a web-hosted uh, wiki-type uh, place where everyone can go to find out how we work, what's expected of them, and things like that. And back this up with regular user training, which we've tried in the past, but in the past it was optional to come along to user training sessions. Um, now it will be a sort of compulsory thing that we will have sessions on a regular basis, which all staff are obligated to attend and really comes down to just rules 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 and having someone enforce those rules um, so that there's no room for people to do what suits them and i found that's probably one of the biggest issues is that without any authority on a project people will just do whatever that it is for them that suits them uh, at the time and usually what they do for them at the time doesn't suit the project in the long run, so it causes more issues than what it was actually anticipated to save. So yeah, rules, rules, rules is um, where we will be at. So if you've got any questions, please uh, fire away now. Um, otherwise, you can contact me on tony.fitzpatrick at thebimcrowd.com.com or um, find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'll be with AW2 for a few more months, um, but that's probably the safest address to get me in the, in the long run. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much. So we have our questions. Uh, so first one is uh, from the Slido app. So um, from Anonymous, um, it's a question kind of to all presenters, but uh, of course, currently for Tony. So BIM, basically, uh, you, you talk mainly about new buildings, but uh, what is the experience and the benefits for ex existing buildings, in your opinion? Please turn on your microphone. I think it's muted. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, Hello. I, I guess. Um, I guess it sort of makes it easy uh, to to manage uh, defining clearly what is new and what's uh, existing and, and what's coming out. I mean, I know in ARCHICAD there's some really good functionality for that. Um, and I have not really worked on a, a big scale project with um, a renovation, but I have worked on lots of small, like, you know, residential housing and stuff like that. But the, the projects that I've been involved on a big scale have mainly been new. But, I still see the same um, same possibilities and the same use for BIM, whether it's existing or a renovation or, or brand new. Thanks, Tony. And uh, now we have a few questions of our own. So uh, how do you think, how critical it is to initially evaluate the design team's skills and how to avoid lies? And being the head, head of BIM, uh, what would be your uh, you know, updated uh, workflow or, or approach towards the organization of the works uh, in the next yeah. project? Um, yeah, absolutely. Analyzing the, um, the team strengths or, or the team skill levels is, is critically important. And also um, sort of having a initial um, estimation, I guess, of how the project will work, what's required, so what the deliverables are, what the... Um, outputs that you need to, to get out and how the best way of achieving that is and who the people are that you need to do that. Um, we made the mistake of just throwing people at this project um, 
and just to do something which was actually uh, more easily done by someone who knew what they were doing um, in a fraction of the time while they were doing something else. So um, knowing people's strengths really, really does help. Yeah, yeah correct. And uh, how big is the project manager's role? Uh, in the BIM project to avoid such mess. Because reflecting on the uh, previously told uh, during one of the panel discussions, uh, we understood that it is crucial to try to, you know, combine the BIM requirements uh, with the rest of the requirements and combine contracts and all these things. So the same applies to the management routines, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, I think it's sort of the way that we're sort of looking to structure it is that our project architect and our BIM manager or our project BIM manager will be heading the team and, and they'll be the most critical people. So they would be working together um, to produce the outcomes uh, rather than sort of, you know, working in isolation and one, one being worried about architecture and the other being worried about BIM. So it's, I think the collaboration and the coordination is absolutely critical. Yeah. Do you think that uh, there should be still two separate roles for two separate people, like the BIM manager or the, the digital integrated delivery manager and the project manager at a higher level, maybe communicating with the client more on the business case, et cetera, et cetera, or it might be combined? Uh, yeah, I mean, the way we're addressing that is um, ultimately we would create two, or allow for two positions, one for the project architect, project leader, one for the BIM manager, um, but depending on the size of the project and the skill of the, of the person involved, that could be the same person, it might be two separate people. So um, it really comes down to how skilled, I guess, the, the lead designer is and the project manager and, and how far their skills extend. So uh, if they can do it, fine. If not, we'll, we'll just have a, a BIM manager worrying about delivery of the digital model and then the project manager or project architect can worry about the design and the architecture of the whole thing. Right. And uh, the last question, were there any good outcomes uh, from the bad quality, if any? Uh, uh, in, <laughs> for example, uh, like being able to have more iterations due to the necessity to rework, maybe you came up with the better design solutions, etc. Probably not in regard to the project itself. I think the, the best outcome or the, the, the biggest positive was that it um, forced us into uh, uh, what you call it, a real uh, look at ourselves, um, see, see what we're doing, how we're working, um, you know, the old kick in the pants and think, heck, we've got work to do. Let's now, um, how do we fix the problems? How do we not do this again? So. Um, in that regard, we've been really, really um, putting a lot of time and effort over the last, or especially six, what are we now? No, maybe even eight months, nine months into reviewing our whole system. Um, we've had uh, workshops for senior team um, with ongoing development of our systems and processes, um, developing a, the BIM manual. Um, and then slowly introducing all the new rules and structures and, and how we work. So it, it, and yeah, that's a big positive, but, that's, but on the project, I, don't, I haven't seen any yet, no. Thank you, Tony. Basically, uh, a lot of agile project management methodologies actually cover such things, and they're named like uh, or either retrospection or introspection when you are, you know, trying to align your in internal processes, uh, having these lessons learned, etc. So, thank you very much for joining us today.